I pause as I recognize that there's a caller. Caller there, yeah. Working for you, good afternoon. Working for you, good afternoon. Good afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs> good afternoon. Hello. Hello, we're hearing you. You hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. um, I, w I want to make, I am very short. I see too much young men who are going to prison for guns, marijuana, they come out and their behavior ain't changed at all. And the system not doing nothing about it. I believe when you're going to prison, when you get to prison for whatever reason, when you come out with the public must some change in you. While the public ain't not changing you, they're gonna be very scared of you. And the police and you see this guy going to prison? They come out my for my one and say with a big motorbike sure. trained up in the year and nobody 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 say nothing to them. Okay. So we need to see some changes. Sure. When a guy gets prison and he come out, we need to see him he look look like he changed. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Mr Petty, I think you can probably speak a little bit to that. Uh last yesterday, uh Mr Hodge was installed as the the new superintendent of prisons and I think you touched on that issue. Yes, we have recently installed Johnny Hodge as a new superintendent or the new superintendent of prisons and we thank Mr. Connor who has been acting. I would want to say that Mr. Connor has been very strong in his support for rehabilitative programs. There are a number of programs which are contemplated. The caller mentioned people who go in there for drugs and so at the moment most of the programs in the prison are general. They will do CSEC, CXC, CSEC subjects. There may be some vocational programs and so on. But there are not many which are geared towards dealing with a particular type of problem like drugs or sex offenders and so on. And so the rehabilitation program at the prison is going to go down that road in terms of not just having general programs and general counseling programs, but also having rehabilitation programs which are specific to the type of offense which you did to try and correct them. Um, so with the installation of the new superintendent, we expect to have much more vigorous and sustained movement in that direction. But there are a number of rehabilitation programs which are contemplated. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Petty. We're going to take one more call, and then we're going to start wrapping up. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome for you. Good afternoon. I joined you all just in time to know that um, I, can, I mean about the inquest here in Evis. But why I am calling is that the high command, they were there in Evis when they had the press conference. And it was a very troubling statement from Police Henderson, when he was asked a question concerning the police that shot the young man, 17 years old, and he said to eat his own. And that is a very, very troubling statement, and I would like the High Command there to talk about it, because if to eat his own, exactly what does the police mean by that? Because it's not a good statement to make, because we know better. Thank you. This commissioner, I think Commissioner Lyle was responding to you with that statement. I'm not too sure, I, I do not recall that exact statement. If you're there, you could, so you could call me off line and remind me. My, my number is 662-4664. Again, my number, 662-4664. But what I do know, what I'm saying, that we are moving and anyone who breaks the law, police or civilian, and when it comes to shooting or any matter, the, the course of the law will operate. If the process this is going through is what the law allows us to do, and we're going through that process. Okay. <clears throat> well, we've had a very lively discussion today. We've had the high command of the Royal St. Christopher and Navy's Police Force, along with Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Mr. Osmond Petty. And I would invite you, I'll give you a minute each, if you can give some closing remarks. If I may quickly say, the, the Minister of National Security, who is the Prime Minister, and in general, the Ministry of National Security is 
we, are, we have been providing the resources that are necessary and that is our commitment to, to give the police the, the support and resources that they need to do their job. The government has hired the Graham Hill Police Advisors from the United Kingdom and they have assisted us very well in terms of training, mentoring, working with the strategic plan and so on. We have bought comparison microscope for the forensic lab. We have been providing vehicles and we are going to be investing very shortly heavily in CCTV and so on. And so our job is to provide the resources. I want to just echo something which was started by Superintendent Henry to say that um, as we have discussed, security of the state is the responsibility of every citizen and all citizens should be should, should be part of it. Nobody should be passive. This could simply mean making sure your, your, your doors are closed at night, making sure that um, you be vigilant in the community. Businessmen and women invest in cameras which are of state of the art and so on. And People with security systems make sure that the, the security officers are trained and make your, any cameras you have available to the police and to help them in their, in their effort. As I said, I, I want to close by saying that it's everybody's business, it's not the police. And if each person or entity take their part responsibly, then we would begin to address the problem and hopefully overcome this problem that we have at this time. Superintendent Hughes. Yes, in closing, I would like to again <coughs> emphasize how important it is for us as parents to know where our children are at night. After 10 o'clock at night, a child on the street, the police has the right to pick them up and take them to the police station, and the parent would then have to come and collect that child. Know where your children are. Search your children, bags, their phones, do whatever it is you have to do. We have to go back, I mean, this is introducing, almost introducing something new at the end, but there is a school is an officer program that the police intend to re, uh, re-enter, not re-enter, to bring back into, into the system. We introduce. We reintroduce into the system where every police is uniformed and we would want it to be uniformed officers attached to each school and that way they have a closer relationship with the guidance counselors they had the, the the teachers they had the principals and we would know who are the at-risk youths and collaboratively we have to continue to rebuild trust i mean you hear a lot of people talking about the lack of trust they don't trust the police they don't so we have got to go and earn the trust of the people and I intend to work along. I intend to be here to listen to people. And I, I don't want it to be a I think. So we, as the high command of the police force, we want to hear from you. We're not just talking at you. We want to listen. And so it is a partnership that we want to, to, to carry on from here on. We can't change what happened in the past. But we're looking at the present, we're looking at the future, and together we can change things for the better. Thank you. Right, thank you. Uh, in closing, I just want to reiterate an earlier point that I made about the importance of the community collaborating with the, the police. The police alone cannot solve crime, and so we need the assistance of the community. Despite the concerns, we still encourage you to use other other means, other methods that we have provided that are much more, much safer if you if you have cause for concerns for your safety. The crime hotline that, that we've that we've established, I would reiterate the, the number, one 800 or one 800 tips The call is a confidential call. You do not have to give your name. And the most important thing, you might even receive a reward if the information proves to be to be to be to be good. And so we want to remind the public that they have a responsibility as well, and it is not only the police's responsibility. But if we both work hand in hand, I'm, I'm sure that we could, we could reduce the scourge of crime that we have in, the, in our society. Thank you. Um, like the others before me, I want to say 
<coughs> that the picture that we are seeing now, it's by no means glorifying and no means what we want for this our beloved federation. The incidents of gun violence and murders certainly much too high and I'm making special appeal to the gang men to tone down. We can have dialogue, we can discuss and come up with meaningful ways in which we can resolve those differences that you may have. I also want to remind that there's tremendous economic and other downfall that can not be beneficial to this federation if we continue on the path we are. And you are to remember that and ask yourself, is this St. Kitts and Nevis that you would want for your children to grow up in? Because that is critical whether or not you want your country to be like this for your children to go up in. Because at the end of the day, we want a country where peace abounds. We have put forward, as we said before, legislative recommendations. We are hoping that those recommendations can be put through the process and that we can see some benefits coming in that direction. I also want to use the opportunity to commend the senior minister, the, the, the Premier of Nevis, who has been leading the effort in terms of getting the churches involved. He's the Minister for Ecclesiastical <coughs> Affairs. Getting the churches involved because the church is a very powerful organization. And from that organization, we can get some results. Mm -hmm. So we really want to ask you as a public to participate when you see the officers on, uh, in your policing district on the street, engage them, speak to them, say what you know, so that um, when we resume our uh, town hall meetings and other engagement strategies, that we can have that rapport developed to such a stage that the transition would be very smooth. Thank you very much for having us. Is it been live? Well. But whatever our thought is, uh, I just want to say, Mr. Petty said something about the royalties in Christopher Nevis. Yes. This year, within the first quarter, we expect to have changes within the force. It drives towards accountability. It drives where people not only have to look at the commissioner of police, but we must look at the deputy the commissioner the accountability and the ACPs who will drive what we need to happen. Already, right now, our operation presently is being held and handled by Superintendent Hughes. I know that she's holding the responsibility of operations presently, and she's the first female so high to hold that position. And I believe that Mr. Petty is alluding to it and said with a strong force. We must look towards all of the police officers because accountability it will be the way forward as we move forward with the force, much stronger than it is. I know that people expect the police to do a lot. That is reason that is for because we the leader. But I want to say that I thank all who have participated. I believe today I had a little word with the Attorney General who supports us with some legislative changes that will come. We have the Minister of Health. Mr. Hamilton, who will support us also to some changes of getting the medical persons on board because we have to hear from all the persons such as the medical team and the medical personnel to know how much it is impacting us. As Mr. Creedy said, the senior minister is on board. So therefore, if you're having the ministers on board and we have all the politicians irrespective of their parties on board and we have the citizens and the t teachers and all who we could think of and civil servants on board supporting us, then we say, parents, come on board with us with your children, and we can have a better think it's and Nevis. I want to thank you for listening to us. I want to thank you, Lady for having us here with you. At least I believe that we had a reasonable good day. Let us look for action, because we are out at the moment, the police, on the road, doing what we say we are doing. I believe, if you check now, and I'm looking at the time, we should be seeing officers this evening as you go around certain parts of think it's in operation. Sure.
<laughs> but I want to thank all of you for being here today, Mr. Petty, Acting Commissioner of Police, Mr. Stafford Liburd, Assistant Commissioner of Police with responsibility for crime, Mr. Ian Queeley, Superintendent Comrel Henry, who is Commander of Division B, and Superintendent Merslin Hughes, who is at the present moment charged with the responsibility for operations. I want to thank you for sharing with a concerned public about national security. And please keep doing what you are doing to keep our nation safe. I am Lestroy Williams, your host. Remember tomorrow on Freedom FM from 7.30 to 9 a.m. We have a rebroadcast. And on Vaughn Radio tomorrow as well from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. We will be back next. For you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, Win FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for